As we address in the virtual demo of properly setting up your laser tracker, we've already determined the area to locate our radian core and completed the infill calibration. If you missed this demonstration, please reference that before continuing to use your laser tracker. We've already connected to our third-party software and run the radian interface. Now we're ready to move forward with acquiring our data. In all third-party metrology software, there are many ways of gathering your measurement data. We will be addressing many of the most common methods used in the field with a standard 1.5-inch SMR. All of these software packages contain measurement modes that have a user behind the computer selecting measurements while another user is running the SMR on the parts. However, since I'm measuring by myself, I will be demonstrating the measurement modes that allow a single user to collect data without another user present. Our first points will be taken to establish a plane or flatness check using a method that will record a point once the SMRs remain stable in the same place for a specific amount of time. This method is known as stable point, smart point, stability trigger, among many other names. You can customize the time and movement parameters in your measurement profiles. Where you place your SMR is directly correlated to the specifications of your job. For this demo, we will be creating a relatively even space grid of coverage for the plane. Next, we will be acquiring the same data, but we will be using a dynamic measurement technique. As with the previous method, there are many different names for this, including dynamic scanning or scrubbing. This process involves establishing a stable surface and then moving your SMR across the surface, maintaining constant contact and keeping the face of the SMR towards the radian at all times. Once you've reached the end of your measurement, you should spin the face of the SMR away from the laser tracker while maintaining contact to the surface. You can also put your hand in front of the SMR to break the connection of the laser beam. If you do not break the beam, you will continue acquiring data as you raise the SMR off the surface. This will result in additional unusable data being taken. Anytime you acquire data with an SMR of any size, your data will be associated with the center of the SMR. Your third-party software will offset this data to the proper location as long as you've selected the correct SMR size in your measurement profile. In this case, I'm using a 1.5-inch SMR, so the data will be shifted 3 quarters of an inch in the proper direction. Depending on the software you're using, it will either pick the projected direction based on the angle of the tracker's encoders or by taking a point in space to establish that direction. These offsets can be adjusted as necessary if the direction is not applied correctly. You'll notice that the data between the dynamic and stable measurements are nearly identical, but they do show some slight deviation. Due to the large number of points acquired during the dynamic measurement, you will have more opportunity to show the variances of the machining process. Stable and dynamic measurements can be used to measure other features as well. These features include, but are not limited to, lines, circles, spheres, and cones. We will be recording additional plane measurements to show the perpendicularity of the sides of this part. We will also be recording the edges of our part using the 1.5 inch SMR and an edge nest. You'll find that an edge nest tends to be included in most standard laser tracker toolkits. It allows you to accurately locate the straight edge of a right angled part in one measurement. You can also locate the edge of your part by taking measurements on each surface, creating a plane, and intersecting those two planes. The line formed at that intersection will also be the same edge as the one you find projected from your SMR and edge nest measurements. Perpendicularity and parallelism of our stable and dynamic lines can be shown the same way we found the perpendicularity of our first two planes. There are many other features that can be inspected by the radian, but we'll cover those later on when we speak about how API can help you improve your inspection process. Thanks for watching our video. If you'd like to learn more or schedule a web demo or on-site demo of any of our equipment, please reach out to us at apimetrology.com to speak to a real metrologist today.